Greetings, greetings, Dr. Drake. It's great to see you. It's good uh, to see you. I've never had the opportunity to see you before. Well, I think actually, if technically, I think we met in the hallway of Space Sciences we did. at Cornell in 1977. And somebody, of course, said, that's, that's Frank Drake. That's <laughs> Frank Drake, man. And I played along and I wandered uh, into a, a lab where you guys had set up my, what I believe was a version of the Miller Urey experiment. And that was really, it yeah. really made an impression on me, my friend. That was really something. So your equation, one might easily argue, is the second most famous equation known to people, uh, the Drake equation. I really so uh, historically, what was going, what was going on with the Dolphin Club? What was, <laughs> what's, what's the deal there? Somebody was studying dolphins. Yes. <clears throat> when we had that uh, meeting in 1961, a very hot science subject was the intelligence of dolphins and were they really probably as smart as we are. And so at the meeting, the one who was the leader in that whole business came and started talking about it and it just took over the meeting because this was the, the big, big uh, subject of the day. Well, Carl Sagan was there, right? Carl Sagan was there, but at that time, Carl Sagan was still an up and comer. He wasn't a big yeah. name in the world. Yeah. Well, but, but uh, we get, one of the people who came was Melvin Calvin. Yeah, Melvin Calvin, they, they, who um, got the Nobel Prize for <clears throat> got the Nobel Prize for what? Tell the listeners, please tell us. Understanding how chlorophyll works. Ah, uh, yes. How many yeah. people were there? Twelve. Twelve people. Yes. And you guys also had picked a logical frequency, right? That uh, that would we, we had be used to listen. We, we it was a big problem. What frequency should we listen on? Where we might get messages? What frequency would extraterrestrials think are the best ones to use in talking to us? And there there are lots of possibilities, but one of the obvious ones was the High, the uh, frequency of the hydrogen atom in its lowest <clears throat> lowest energy transition, and that that had been a recent uh, discovery that is radio uh, transmissions from on that frequency, which come from all over the sky, and so it's it just hit a nail on the head as to what would be a, a obvious thing that the extraterrestrials might think was important and use to communicate to others. Let's, let's just review the doggone equation, everybody. Let's say, where are we at now? Where are we right now, Frank, Dr. Drake? How many stars in our galaxy? 200 billion? Yeah. yeah. You guys change every few weeks, but let's say, is it 200 billion? Yeah. And then there are at least that many galaxies, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, well, when I, was in, when I was in school, young man, People like Carl Sagan would, and I guess you, would speculate that let's say there's a planet around orbiting around one in every hundred stars. Yeah. Well, just in my lifetime, you all have changed it to 10 around every star. Yeah, that's right. That's the real value. Yeah, that's a, what is a factor of 100 right there. Yep. Do you think the chances of listening, or uh, rather hearing, uh, uh, extraterrestrial signal have gone up or gone down in your lifetime? Oh, they've gone up because now every star is a candidate for having signals. Uh, back in when we when I first started in this, we thought maybe one in a hundred might be emitting signals, but nowadays it, it's not only every star is is a candidate, but every every star is probably got possibly more than one emitter. Yeah, one or two, maybe three in the right habitable zone, right? Right, well, all they have to be is in the habitable God, it's zone. just it's just so compelling, Frank. I mean, just what do you think the chances are that there's a stromatolite or fossilized pond scum on Mars? What do you think the chances are? I think the chances are pretty good. That's my, my thought is it's very, very possible. 
and I think uh, you know almost inevitable. We're going to find really we're going to find the remains or evidence of a of life forms having been there sometime since the birth of the sun in lots of places. Not uh, not only in Mars, which, which is great, but there's uh, the like Europa, moon of, Ju- moon ocean, of Jupiter, the ocean of Europa. And that's uh, almost if I were coming from another place to the solar system and saying, well, where, where should we look for life? I wouldn't start with the Earth. I'd go to Europa <laughs> and start right there. What do you think would be the actual outcome if an actual alien signal were actually detected for actual real? If we really did detect an alien signal, you know, books have been written. Carl Sagan wrote a book, became a movie, very popular. Uh, uh, the Outer Limits, the science fiction show, speculated extensively on the worldwide troubles from such a signal. What do you think would happen? Well, I think that whatever happened would be good. Really? Yeah, I think, I don't think people would be frightened. I think they would realize that this was, we were opening a window to a whole host of new information made by other extraterrestrial thinking creatures. So we're being put in, put in touch with uh, a group of thinking people like us, except most of the ones we can find are more advanced than we are because they've been around longer. So Frank, Dr. Drake, is there something you want to know is there something you want to know about the cosmos right now that you want to know don't know? I want to know that they are there. That the, another civilization of some sort is out there. We as yet have no proof of that. And that's very uh, insulting in a way. Because <laughs> you've given it all this thought. Do you worry that you spent 60 years and you haven't heard anything? Does that bug you? I no, I'm just... That just makes me think, wait, 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 we haven't done the right thing yet. 